Hey there and welcome to my channel. In this video I want to talk about Sony Picture Profiles. Uh, more specifically about all the menus, submenus, all the settings, what they mean and how to use all these settings to influence your image and eventually create your very own Sony Film Simulation recipe. So this video was shot on the Sony Eterna Film Simulation and further color graded with the 8mm home film power grade which you can find on my website. As a backstory, so you can understand exactly what this is all about. For the past years, I've been working on this project called Sony Film Simulation Recipes, which are in-camera picture profile settings uh, meant to replicate your favorite film stocks and bake it into your Sony camera uh, to reduce the time spent editing or just to get better color straight out of the camera. They work for both video and photo modes, but for the photo mode, you will need to shoot RAW plus JPEG. Um, you can also choose JPEG only, but I always think it's um, is safer to have both RAW and JPEG in case you decide later that you want to continue post-processing your images and um, you know, like these picture profile settings are not will not be baked in the RAW files, only into the JPEG. But if you want to keep post-processing the images, also prepare some film presets for Lightroom and Capture One for a seamless workflow. So you can find everything on my website, link, link in description down below. <laughs> so we all hear that Sony colors are not that great, you know, and that might be true. But since this project appeared, people changed their belief on Sony colors and what kind of colors you can get straight out of camera without any editing. Better skin tones and just, you know, overall better color over your image, cutting down the editing process, sometimes even completely. So let me show you some before and after shots from my latest YouTube project so you can see exactly what I'm talking about. You can see how nice the colors are coming straight out of the camera and I barely touched the image in post with some conscious adjustments, slight saturation increase, temperature adjustments, also by adding some green teal hues in the highlight, tweaking the colors a little bit. The color grading process was cut down by around 70-80% and that is all because I used a big thin picture profile called Portrait 400 which gave me the kind of look I needed. That saved me a lot of time and hard drive space because everything was shot on 8-bit. Even Sony mentions on their website that tweaking the picture profile settings can actually be used to cut down the editing process to get closer to the kind of look that you want inside the camera. Sony Film Simulations will give you better color, better low light performance and less hard drive space needed for each project, easing your workflow. It's pretty crazy. So you can always push the colors further if you want to, no problem. But it already has really nice colors straight out of the camera and that's a huge work lift and a time saver. Lately, this project had a huge explosion in popularity and since there's pretty much nobody explaining how Sony picture profiles work or how to use it to influence the image, today I want to explain every bit of it and show you exactly how to create your very own custom picture profile recipe in under 30 minutes. So first things first, you need to check if your camera has a picture profile menu. Nowadays, most Sony cameras have it included, but you still need to check if your camera has it or not. But only to be sure, you need to Google your camera model and check if it has the picture profile menu. Important detail, not the picture effect, but the picture profile menu which looks like this. So at the moment, the A9 line and the full frame RX1R line doesn't come with the picture profile menu. Hopefully they're included in newer models. Sony film camera line. I wish Sony continued with the RX1 or at least create an APS-C sensor camera with film aesthetic and more in-depth picture profile controls like hue versus hue, hue versus saturation and green effect. Because we already have hue versus luma, which is the color depth. Why not add all of these as well so we can cut down the color grading completely and create more complex film simulations for Sony cameras. That would make Sony cameras truly limitless. Even though the picture profile menu is mainly focused for video, Sony mentions it can be used for photos as well and the recipes will be baked into JPEG only. But I always choose the raw JPEG option in case I want to post process the image later. Because if I take a great shot which I want to print or put in my portfolio, I'll spend the extra hours color grading and I need the raw power. It's always safer to have both raw and JPEG, but of course you can shoot JPEG only as well. So film simulation presets. Unfortunately, only some of the picture profile settings will be transferred to the raw files and those are just a few. So to not waste time on color grading, I also made some Lightroom and Capture One presets for a seamless workflow when using the Sony Film Simulation recipes and you can check them out on my website store. So let's get into the menu and see what we got there. The black level. First thing is the black level. And this is basically just like lifting or crushing the black point in any editing software. So as you can see, if you drag it down, you'll crush the blacks, losing detail in the shadow, increasing the contrast and just making the overall image darker. So if you lift it up, you bring the black point higher, meaning you'll be able to save more detail in the darker areas and consequently fading the blacks 
giving your image a soft tonality. But since we want to take benefit of the picture profile menu to bring the image as close as possible to the final look we need, we seldomly bring up the black level because we're trying to bring the image to the final result inside the camera, to cut down the color grading process almost completely. The only situation when you'd really want to fade the blacks is when using it with high contrast gammas. So for example, it works really well with gammas like movie or still, which already have a steep gamma slope and high contrast, which in some occasions might be a little bit too much. So in this scenario, by using the still gamma, we have a punchy contrast as a base and lifting the black retains some of the shadow details. So for low contrast gammas like Cine1 or HLG, I recommend decreasing the shadows to maybe minus 10 or minus 15, since they already have a super soft and faded contrast. And lifting the black level further will only make your image lose contrast and look muddy. Black level will not work with S-Log gammas. Only the black gamma will influence the log gammas, which is the shadow control. So you can choose between a range of narrow, medium, or wide, and either decrease it or increase it. With HLG, it's the exact opposite. Only the black level will work, so the black gamma is disabled. So either way, Sony compared to other manufacturers doesn't compress the image so much. So even if the shadows or highlights seem crushed, I'm always surprised how much detail I can actually recover in post-processing. The next item on the menu is the gamma. And this will define the gamma slope, which defines the contrast of your image and is comparable to an S-curve. Each gamma will offer different image tonality and dynamic range. Still a movie being the ones with most contrast and least dynamic range, going down to Cine Gammas, which are meant to replicate film like contrast, and finally HLG and S Log, which have the flattest image, soft contrast, and most dynamic range to work with. You can use them all to your advantage in order to get a punchy look or a soft faded one. When choosing one over the other, you need to think about the mood you want to get. What's the story, how punchy or soft you want this scene to look like? I'll show you exactly how to create a basic Sony film simulation, but first I need to talk to you about the black gamma. The black gamma. Simplifying the black gamma, the black gamma is controlling the shadows. The range of shadows being controlled being wide, middle, or narrow. And you can lift them up for a bright glowy look, or push them down for a moody look. You will use the black gamma in combination with the black level and the gamma, going back and forth to further refine your image. This might be too much information all at once, so let me simplify it. I'll show you a basic example of contrast adjustments inside DaVinci Resolve and how to translate the same technique into your Sony's picture profile menu. So whenever you color grade a picture or footage, you'll eventually increase or decrease the contrast and you might end up doing an S-curve. That's comparable to the gamma. And by doing so, you might crush the black level a little bit or maybe raise them for a soft fatty look. That's the black level. Next, you'll push down the shadows to create contrast to focus more on the subject and give a moody tone to your image. That's the black gamma. We can do all this inside the picture profile menu. So you have to think the same way when creating your Sony film simulation. So if I want a moody tone, I firstly choose the still gamma, which is the gamma with most contrast. Then lift up the black point by maybe plus four to fade it out and give a film like vibe. And finally adjust the shadow part using the black gamma. Inside the black gamma menu option, you can choose the range you want to influence, be it narrow, medium or wide. I'll choose wide and push down the shadows to minus 7 because for this film recipe I want a smooth and long shadow slope. So let's say I want to make a picture profile for portraits. I mostly want a bright soft image, so I'll choose to bring up all the shadows that I can to make sure I offer my model a soft transition in the skin tones. Next, I'll go back and adjust the black level to minus 5 to give a little punch in the darkest areas. You can also edit your current picture profiles in the moment in case you feel the image is too contrasty or maybe too soft. This is just a simple example of how easy it is to create your own custom picture profile if you know what you want. And you can notice how much control Sony is actually giving us inside the picture profile menu. I still haven't talked about the color modes, the color shifting options, or how the gamma influence each color mode, because each gamma will also influence your colors differently. So that is important detail to know. Watching this tutorial helps you understand how to influence the picture profiles on the spot, cutting down the editing process. Sony picture profiles give us an insane amount of control over the final image, and that helps us feel more inspired, present in the moment, and not worrying about will this look good after color grading, or how much time will you spend only correcting Sony colors, because I know many of you are not satisfied with the basic Sony profiles. And that's why you're here. And that's why I am here, so you can get more out of your camera without the hassle. 
So these recipes are helpful even if you plan on editing your raw photos afterwards because it's important to see nice colors straight out of the camera to feel inspired and be creative in the moment. You still need standard colors and you'll start thinking that your camera is shit or maybe that you need a better camera or maybe a different brand but maybe you need to know how to get better color straight out of camera and that will help you be more present in the moment. Sony Film Simulations will also help you with the editing process because you can use the JPEG as a reference and say, oh, maybe this is how it's supposed to look like or I could go in that direction with the colors and it can be a great reference point in your raw workflow. After working more than two years on this project, I could talk days and days about Sony Picture Profiles and I still wouldn't be done because I still learn more every day as I test, experiment and create new Sony Film Simulation Picture Profiles only so we can all get better color from our cameras. So join me in this project you can go check out the blog for straight out camera samples. Link in the description. Next on the list, knee. The knee takes control of the highlights and helps you retain some of the details by compressing the brighter parts of the image. It's very similar to the black gamma, which controls the shadows, but in the opposite direction. Inside the knee menu, you will find a point, which controls the percentage from which the highlights start being compressed to retain the details. Then you have the slope, which controls the maximum white level point. Pushing this too much will give your image gray skies, so be gentle. I usually like to go between 75 or 82% with a plus 3 or plus 4 on the slope. You can also experiment on your own. For color profiles, I wouldn't go lower than 75 plus 2 or plus 3, because it will give you only gray spots in the highlights from compression. I found black and white recipes more forgiving in the knee area, being able to push them to somewhere around 75% minus 1 and still looking fairly good, but it all depends what you want. The color modes. There are 10 or more color modes on Sony cameras, each with original color science and look. So you can imagine talking about each color mode specifics would take a lot of time. To keep this tutorial short and easy to follow, I'll just showcase them so you can see the main differences. Oh yeah, also if you were curious what each color on the color checker is representing, I made a blog post on that. You can download the color checker explanation on your phone for better understanding. So after seeing all of them, you probably notice the differences between them, some being very subtle, some more obvious differences. But as a starter, the easiest color modes to start with are Movie, Still, and I2709 Matrix because they all have very simple color spaces and will render beautiful images with high saturation. I think saturation is self-explanatory. You can decrease or increase the saturation from minus 32 to plus 32. Next we have the color phase. This tool, in combination with the color depth, is a very powerful tool, which will shift all the colors in different directions, giving you different color palettes. So for example, if you shift the color phase to a negative value, it will shift the whole color palette counterclockwise. 
So if we drag it down to minus 7, reds will become orange, yellows become green, greens become teal, and blues will become velvet magenta. If we lift it up to plus 7, the reds will become magenta, yellows become orange, greens become olive, and blues become teal or even green. So as a starter, you want to be gentle with these looks, experiment, and in time you will learn how to balance out the picture profiles with the color temperature and the color filter, creating more complex film simulations. I'll push it down to minus 2 to slightly shift the reds towards orange. Now if you downloaded the color checker from my blog post, you know what each color square represents. And you can see our skies will be slightly magenta because we just pushed down the color phase to minus 2. So to fix this, let's go into the temperature settings and let's drag down the Kelvin by 200 or 500. And this will calibrate the blues and the yellows, shifting them towards colder tonalities, meaning blue and pink. If this is not enough, then go a step further and push the color filter ever so gently towards cyan or green amber, depending what temperature you like for your images. That will push a little bit more green into the scene, affecting all the colors, making the reds a little bit more orange, and shift magentas towards blue teal. The color filter will introduce colors into your image, which is helpful to shift and correct colors. But you gotta know what you're doing and to be gentle. Use it harshly and you will tint your whole image with a certain color which might or might not be what you want. It's always safer to start slow and then add more if you like it. I have an in-depth article on how the color filter actually brought me closer to Fuji colors and I showcase the results compared to Fujifilm. Check out the blog for the results and full explanation. Okay, so some people ask me how to use the color filter settings found on the website because it might be confusing if it's your first time using these film simulations. So if you purchase the Sony Film Simulation Pack, on the website you will find different color setting variations, like this for example. And this is confusing for some people because they don't know which one should they use for this particular film recipe. And to answer this, each setting was carefully chosen to give you a specific mood depending on what color variation this film stock might have given real life. But I've also made original film simulations like the Vector 100, which are not replicating any real film. It was designed to give you more interesting colors and contrast out of the box, for which I prepared multiple color variations for different moods. So you can use all of them, but they will all give you different uh, colors. So for example, Kodak Gold. This is a simulation which emulates the real Kodak Gold film stock. So based on the many film references found online, it sometimes comes out predominantly red, uh, other times a little bit on the yellow green side, so I prepared multiple settings to emulate all those colors and moods. You need to imagine. So for example, these settings in particular will overpower the reds giving you a warmer image. The next one will push the color predominantly in the yellow green zone, shifting the shadows towards green and skin tones towards amber. So after you input the temperature settings, all you have to do is lift or lower the Kelvin values based on your scene until you're satisfied with the image coming out of the camera. If you reach the max point of the Kelvin values and you want the image even colder or hotter, then start working with the color filter to get to the point you want it to be. But in most cases, after you input the settings on the website, you only need to decrease or increase the Kelvin. So you either need to try out all the settings to see which is on your liking, or you need to look at the settings and try to understand in what direction they are going. Okay, cool. So next we have color depth which is basically brightness for each individual color channel. And this is so crazy because Sony has given us options for each individual color channel. Fuji also has a similar option called Chroma Effect, but it only has two options, the Chroma Effect and Chroma Effect Blue. And it's not as powerful as Sony's. So we're really lucky to have these because it makes a whole lot of difference how the final image will look like. So if you lift it up, the colors become deeper, richer, and if you drag it down, they will become brighter. So let me share with you a cool trick about these. When you deepen color, they seem more saturated. They're not necessarily, but they will look saturated and rich, which if you brighten them up, they might look a little bit less saturated. So by making colors deeper, you can also increase dynamic range, preserving more details, for example, in the skies, and change the way the film simulation should be exposed. And one more thing, and this is very interesting. I notice sometimes by shifting the color depth, colors will also shift their hue, and I think it's about Sony's way of dealing with color. Sometimes I notice by pushing the reds brighter will make them seem almost pink. Or if you darken it, it will shift towards red or orange. You can notice the color shift happening more often in film simulations that have a strong color adjustment. But in this one in particular, it's almost non-existent. This is a really cool trick which I recently found out in my experimentation while creating some film simulations like the Ektachrome and the Kodachrome 64. 
and that really helped me coming closer to the real film stock. So for this basic film recipe, I'll shift reds to minus 3, greens to plus 7, blues and cyan to plus 5, magentas to plus 7, and yellows to minus 3. This will give our recipe bright skin tones with deep and rich colors of blue, green, and magenta. Okay, cool. So the last step for this basic film recipe is to adjust the detail settings to give a soft cinematic tone. So this was probably the hardest thing to find out and took me about one and a half year to actually understand how they work because Sony seems to kind of hide explanation to all these settings or at least not be very explanatory to what each setting does. But finally after about one year and a half, I found out exactly what each setting does and how to adjust the detail menu to get the softest film-like image out of my Sony. I found these to be the best detail settings for a soft film-like image inside the camera, and I'm sharing these with you. Let's not forget we are shooting digital cameras with super sharp lenses, so the image will still be rather sharp. So I highly recommend using a diffusion filter to cut down the digital edge and also give your image a soft, subtle glow. I use these settings for the inner detail menu and then adjust the global detail on my personal preference. I do like the global detail at round minus 7 for the softest image possible. But sometimes, social media has such a heavy compression method that will make images look mushy. So the solution to this would be to leave the global detail adjustment between minus 3 and 0, or to add film grain in post and that will help keep the image together. I also have posted multiple detail settings on my forum, from the softest possible to the sharpest, for different purposes, and also the meaning for each of these options. And this is super helpful if you're using vintage lenses which have lower sharpness compared to your digital lenses and will definitely need a higher level of detail or otherwise it will destroy your footage. So as a recap, so now that we have an understanding of what a Sony picture profile setting is actually doing, let's recap all the modifications we have brought to the picture profile and why. So first I choose the still gamma for a punchy look and I will fade the blacks with the help of the black level at around plus 4 maybe for a soft faded look in the darker areas. Then further push down the shadows for a moody look. I'll choose white minus 7, but if you want a portrait profile, maybe go for white plus 5. You'll need to test it out to see. I'll set the knee at 75% plus 4 to retain some details and for a soft compressed highlight roll off. For color modes, I'll choose still because I like how it saturates some of the yellows, which I believe is the most problematic colors for Sony cameras. Boost saturation at around plus 2. Decrease the color phase at minus 1 or minus 2 to shift the skin tones towards amber and a more earthy skin tone. This will shift the skies towards magenta. So to correct this, I lower the temperature by 200-500 Kelvin, then push the color filter towards amber green to normalize the blues and make reds slightly more orange. I have an in-depth article on how the color filter actually brought me closer to Fuji colors and I showcase the results compared to Fujifilm. Check out the blog for the results and full explanation. For color depth, I use these settings for bright skin tones and deep blue skies and green foliage. And finally, the softest detail possible for a film-like image straight out of the box. And usually, I'll add a black mist filter on top. This is the before and this is the after. Okay, cool trick. Set one of your buttons to live display on and off, and you can instantly check the differences between the Sony standard colors and the film simulation you have created. Let's see the final result. While I was shooting, I made some slight adjustments to get the colors that I wanted and here are the settings for the improved recipe. Okay, let's talk about exposure because exposure is extremely important when using these film recipes and not only. Because how you expose will make the difference between boring shots or cinematic film looking images and will also influence your color. So first off, I want to say there is no rule on how to expose. It's a matter of preference. So don't limit yourself to what others say or even my own personal opinion, okay? Just start experimenting and find your own way of exposing. That being said, Many people ask me how do I expose, and the simplest most general answer would be to underexpose by half a stop, maybe even one stop. But at the same time, some picture profiles like Portrait 400, Ektachrome or Kodachrome 64 look better overexposed. And some picture profiles like Portrait 800 need to be overexposed by at least one stop, otherwise they will come out very noisy. I expose by eye. 
I always look at the screen and know exactly how it needs to be exposed for the final image to look like in my head and to cut down the editing process as much as possible. So it all comes to your vision. I highly recommend defining your style and vision and exposure will no longer be an uncertainty. But as a reference, I have the metering mode set to entire image so it analyzes the whole scene. And I usually notice that I generally go for minus 0.3 or minus 0.7 exposure. In this scene, I have a white wall which is indicating I'm overexposed when in reality I would be around uh, zero exposure or maybe even lower. I like a slightly toned down image, a little bit underexposed to save details in the highlights, also give some contrast to the scene. So it's always a matter of balancing out highlights and shadows. You should have a strong understanding on how to expose for the subject, while also saving as much highlight detail and not underexposing too much. I like to say a uh, balanced exposure. So just load some film simulations, go out and start experimenting. Come back home and check your photos on the screen. That's how you learn how to expose. This is elementary. It's more important than anything. Because I prepared all the settings for you. So you don't have to understand color harmony or how to create film simulations like complex film simulations and color science. Only to focus on composition and proper exposure. So start experimenting. Kelvin and color filter. The Kelvin and color filter adjustments are extremely important. So some people ask me if they can skip the color adjustment and just use auto white balance because it's easier. The answer is yes and no, but mainly no. With 90% of these film recipes, you will still get better color than your basic Sony picture profiles, okay? But you're missing the true potential. Each film recipe is specifically designed in combination with the temperature adjustments. Some of them will not look as good without the Kelvin and the color filter settings. Because the Kelvin and the color filter adjustments complement the recipes and are meant to cut you the extra steps in color grading. So yeah. Also, white balance will give you a totally different colors from image to image because the values fluctuate depending on the situation. So for example, we have Sony standard colors at auto white balance, okay? Let's compare it with the Sony classic chrome film recipe without the color adjustment. It looks better than any basic Sony picture profile, but it's still not there. Now let's see the Sony Classic Pro with the in-camera color settings found on my website. There's a huge difference. If we compare it to the Fuji, you can see it comes extremely close. And that is because I used the color adjustments found on the website. Reds are still a little bit shifted towards magenta, but it comes very very close to Fuji without any editing and compared to Sony standard colors, it's a huge improvement. So I highly recommend using the temperature adjustments if you want better color. They were carefully chosen to complement each recipe. So after you input the in-camera color adjustments, all you have to do to adjust the temperature is to work with the Kelvin values. Raise them or decrease them to match the look you want straight out of camera. And this is the versatility digital cameras offer us. Film rolls are calibrated at a fixed temperature, which is, let's say, for example, 5500 Kelvin. And that can be limiting because you could use a specific film roll in a specific situation. But with digital, we can adjust the temperature to balance out the colors and get the color we want straight out of camera without color correction in post. Okay, matching different Sony cameras. Sony keeps improving their color science, so every camera will have a slightly different color science. For example, the RX100 Mark VI and the A7 III have been released in the same period, but the RX100 Mark VI will be more on the green side, while the A7 III is shifted towards magenta. To match the both, I will set the RX100 at M5 on the color filter and the A7 III at G.5. If one of the cameras is still too magenta, lift the color phase by one or two stop to shift all the colors clockwise. This will balance out the tint shift each camera has, bringing them closer together. After experimenting so much with Sony's picture profiles in the last couple of years, I started to adjust my picture profile settings and the color settings on the go. So the picture profile gives me the exact colors that I want straight out of camera. And you will be able to do that as well after you experiment with them for a little while. Refining the recipes on the spot will further cut down the editing process. There are pretty much unlimited directions you can go with these Sony picture profiles, so it's impossible to explain each possibility. But I wanted to explain the gist of it so you can understand the logic behind and eventually start creating your very own Sony film simulation recipes. I know it's a lot of information to grasp at first and it might sound very complicated if you never had any contact with the Sony system or with the picture profiles and that's why I already created more than 40 Sony film simulation recipes so you can get the colors that you want without the hassle. You can find the film simulation recipes on my website. 
At a moment, it costs $22. Uh, it's a one-time payment and you get lifetime access to all the updates and all new film recipes I create. Make sure to check the blog for straight out of camera images and for detailed explanation articles for film recipes. There's a link in the description, so go check it out. Thanks for watching. I hope this tutorial helps you understand Sony colors and Sony picture profiles and see you next time.